uh, last year at, at your position, depth was uh, was pretty non-existent. How do you you feel about the the depth that you've got right now, especially the way that this season could play out, and you know some of the possibilities here? Yeah, um, playing three guys the whole season wasn't wasn't fun, but um, you know, and that's why we recruit, and so I feel a lot better. Obviously, we brought in. A uh, number of guys uh, to play in a secondary. Um, kind of, kind of our approach to recruiting is recruit guys that can do more than one thing uh, when it comes to the secondary. So, uh, between uh, you know Graham and Eaton and Kendall Dennis, um, Justin Harrington, um, you know, just a number of different guys that can uh, help us out that way and, and, and get into that lineup. Appreciate it. Okay, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World, and then Jason Kersey. Coach, we talked to Alex a, a little bit last week, and he talked about Trey Norwood. And I was wondering, what would it be like to get a healthy Trey Norwood out there? And Alex said he could play five different spots. And as at corner, how advantageous is that to have him available? Yeah, it's huge. And, 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 and probably uh, as much uh, this season, as much as any, where um, you kind of anticipate needing to uh, move guys around, you know, with, with COVID and things like that. You just don't know uh, week to week who, who you'll have and who you won't have. And so uh, guys that can play more than one position are premium. And Trey is one of those guys, you know, that has played all three of the uh, the spots in the secondary for us. Uh, he's healthy, feeling good, you know, running around, flying around, those types of things. And, you know, actually that's one of the challenges of, of, of developing um, some other guys, you know, that can also do that. Um, again, not knowing how the season is going to play out for you on a week-to-week -week basis with who you have available. So, thanks, Coach. Jason Kersey of the Athletic, and then Joe Bettner. Yeah, Roy. Um, kind of piggybacking off that a little bit. Uh, are you guys doing more cross training between safeties and corners than you normally would because of COVID? And then, second part is. Uh, if you if it got if you got desperate enough and you had to bring a receiver over to corner, who who would you want to bring over? Well, um, yeah, we, we we have been to answer your first question. We have been it's kind of been of our our approach, uh, understanding the type of year it would be is to uh, have more of a plan for cross training guys. Um, you know, safety that can play nickel, nickel that can play corner, corner that can play, um, and I think where the benefit is is is. That is how our recruiting is built. Um, it's already built that way um, to recruit guys that have multiple position of uh, flexibility. And so anyone that we've recruited here in the secondary already by nature should be able to play other spots. It's just a matter of teaching it to them, get, getting them repped at it. And so we, we, we definitely went into this off season or, or this camp uh, uh, with that in mind and, and been, been able to do that. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, like the first question, you know, ho hopefully we've added enough depth where we don't have to go over to the other side. But again, you just don't know uh, how things will play out. You know, I know last year we brought Trajan Bridges over uh, for a few weeks to play um, on the defensive side of the ball. And obviously, you know, um, again, I'd, I'd, I'd hate to be in that situation, but we'd find a way, you know what I mean? And, and the good thing for us is that you know, a lot of these guys that we've recruited uh, on either side have, have been two-way players in high school, like a DJ Graham. He's played wide receiver. He's played DB in high school. And Kendall Dennis the same way. And some of those other guys on the offensive side. So, um, fingers crossed we don't get to that point. <laughs> Thanks, Roy. Okay, we'll go to Joe Bettner with the Norman Transcript, who will be followed by Bob Prisbillo. Hey coach, I was curious just with, you know, some of the young guys like Jaden Davis that played last year and, you know, not having a spring, you know, how much did that set them back? But also at the same time, I'm just curious, you know, if you could speak to the, the mental preparation, the physical preparation they've been able to get in, how much they've, I guess, progressed through fall camp. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Very, very uh, unique situation when you think about a kid that we signed last year that doesn't get here into the summer. And so they don't have a spring ball. Fast forward to this spring, now they don't have a spring. And so you have a kid that essentially has missed out on, you know, at least one full spring of development. And so, you know, the message is 
so what now what? You know, the message is um, there's no drop off in the expectation, you know. And for a second year guy like a Jaden Davis or, or a Woody Washington, some of those guys, you know, the expectation is really high, um, especially for a guy like Jaden who played uh, in, a, in a good amount of games last year. You know, um, that's been one of our focuses with him in particular is that you can't look like a freshman again, you know, in year two. You know what I mean? Albeit you didn't have spring, you know, and all those things. But, um, you know, that's just – the expectation and the standard here that if you're going to be on that field, you know, that you're going to have to elevate your game. And that's, I think, one of the challenges for all the players um, missing a spring ball. It's really the message to all of our, our guys. You got to elevate your game and, and, and deal with the circumstances and play at a you know, high level uh, once we start playing here in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Bob Prisbillo with Sooner Scoop and then John Hoover. Yeah, Roy, it always feels like at any position group, you need that one alpha dog. That was Motley last year. Has Trey Brown started to become that guy for this team? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm really excited um, about the steps he's taken uh, from, 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 from January, you know, to, to, till now. I mean, um, to his credit, um, he looks completely different than a year ago. Um, as, as committed right now, as I've seen since I've been here, uh, to his technique, and it's allowing him to make plays and make plays consistently. Um, he, is, he is playing at a, a really high level right now. Um, very pleased. And, and so the challenge will be, uh, can, you, can you be consistent? Can you uh, do it not only uh, in drills or in practice? Can you now transfer that into the big stage, into the games, you know, here in a few weeks? And so, um, but, but – I mean, he's, he's put in a lot of work, and you hope that he would take that step, like you said, being a senior and being a guy that's played in so many ball games here and um, just uh, been extremely pleased with him since we got back out there on that field and been practicing. Okay, John Hoover with SI Sooners and then Jenny Carlson. Hey, Roy, uh, follow-up for you on Trey Brown. Uh, Alex told us last week that his he said he's he said last year he would have a lot of good days and then he would just follow it up with an average day or a bad day. What is it is it now that he's he's having a lot more good days he's stacking them on top of each other. Is it now more that he's I don't know urgency like you mentioned he's a senior uh, he's taking it seriously sees the draft in front of him or is that just part of the natural maturation process. Well, it's probably a combination uh, of both, you know, you know, obviously going into your senior year, you, you really hope as a coach that that light really goes on that, Hey man, this, this is it for you. You know what I mean? This, this is, this is your opportunity now, you know, not only to play your best, but to also put, you know, some good film on tape if you have any aspirations to play at the next level. And, and I definitely think uh, that's a part of his motivation and it should be. Um, you know, and the other part of it is that, you know, he's just worked so hard um, to get to this point, you know, that, that you, you expect to see a guy peaking, you know, you do, you expect to see a guy peaking um, at this stage of his career. And so um, he's leading the charge right now. And, and I'm not you know, afraid to say that he, he is leading by example in everything he does. And a big part of that is his urgency and his ability to stack days. He even uses that term on the day to day. Hey, let's keep stacking days. Let's keep stacking days because he understands that, that he can't uh, have a roller coaster uh, uh, year or a roller, you know, one good period, bad period of practice, you know, one good quarter, bad quarter. And again, he understands, you know, to, for this team to be successful, uh, particularly on defense, he has to play at a high level and stay there. And so it's really been a matter of focusing in on that, um, not making it more than it is, uh, being confident in who he is and, and his ability, and then uh, uh, allowing his ability to take over once you eliminate the thinking. And then the other part of that to keep in mind is that, you know, last year the defense was new. And so, uh, you know, you do expect a jump from year one to two for all these guys that they're now more comfortable within the defense, within the scheme, within the specific details and coaching points of everything they do. 
And so, again, he, he's been lights out, to be honest with you. And I just hope we can keep stacking days and, and, and putting it together as we go into the season. Thanks, Roy. Thank you. Okay, Jenny Carlson with the Oklahoman and then James Hale. Hey, Roy, how are you? Good. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, we know that players talking to players in the recruiting process is important. These guys talk to each other now probably more than ever. But considering how recruiting has been limited by this pandemic, what's, what's the importance in your mind with these guys now talking and sort of peer recruiting each other throughout this process? Yeah, it's, it's, it's critical. And, you know, it, it, it always has been, in my opinion, you know, um, you, you always in the recruiting process hope that you can have a bell cow, so to speak, in your class. Um, a lot of times it happens to be quarterbacks because those guys typically uh, commit, you know, earlier than some of the other guys to, to lock in that spot. And, and I think that's been the trend, obviously, uh, since I've been here. Uh, with Caleb and those guys, they've really uh, done an outstanding job of, of, of rallying each other uh, together and, and, and recruiting each other. You know, you see that trend. If you just look on social media all over the country, how much recruiting uh, recruits have had to do, uh, obviously uh, seeing each other a lot more than, than obviously we've been able to and, and being engaged um, you know, the NCAA did a great job with, you know, some of the uh, uh, rules and things, you know, giving us a, uh, a better shot to communicate with these guys, you know, with the use of Zoom and, and being able to call guys and things like that. But those guys are key. You know, I, I think that um, those relationships are, are always premium because ultimately those, those are the guys that they'll be playing with. Those are the guys that, you know, if they sign with, those will be the guys three, four years from now, you know, that, that'll that be lifelong friends and, and, and comrades and colleagues. So um, I think it's huge. It's huge. Thanks. You're welcome. James Hale and then Garen Emig. Hey, Roy, how you doing, man? Hey, James, pretty good. You mentioned a minute ago that, you know, losing spring has really hurt you a little bit. I'm curious about going into year two at your position with the speed D. How much did you lose there and how much did you get back maybe with the OTAs? And where do you think the advancement is right now with your corners going into year two? Yeah, I just think for any of those young guys, you know, again, you get here in the summer and then you're playing in the fall. And, 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 and so to miss, you know, 15, you know, practices in the spring, particularly for some of those young guys uh, that may not have played last year or right. played very, very limited, you know what I mean? I think that spring ball is 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 obviously an added benefit, but you know, nevertheless, it is what it is, and so we move on. Um, and, and so you have to do the best you can. Um, again, I think that uh, very pleased with where we're at right now in terms of um, adjusting to all that's been put on our plate this year. Um, you know, the, the the freshmen and new guys that that have came in are adjusting. Um, and, and quite honestly, us as coaches, we've had to adjust so much, you know, from Zoom meetings and, 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 and getting creative with how to uh, continually keep guys engaged in meetings for three to five months, you know, this off season. And, and, and then what, what happens is when they finally got here a month ago or so, you realize, you know, Zoom meetings aren't playing football. You know, you can Zoom meet every single day for as long as you want and then you get out there and it's just completely different actually doing it. And so that's what's been so great about OTAs, having that opportunity to build up uh, before you actually throw on pads and get into camp. And, uh, you know, we have to take care of our guys and, and, and give them days off and bag off. But man, you're talking about one coach that just wants to coach every single day and, and, and get that time back. It's just been invaluable for me personally uh, to learn you know, my new guys to, to help develop and, and progress the guys that are here and, and, and bring these guys along. And so uh, I know our days are getting numbered now in terms of our preparation, and we're going to keep on just uh, pounding away at getting these guys ready um, to play this season. So thanks, Roy. I appreciate it. No doubt. We'll go to Garen Emig of the Tulsa World and then Joey Helmer. Good to see you again, Roy. No I, doubt. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to pivot from football for just a second. I hope you don't mind. Uh, on, it's a couple of your guys, 
have been among the most passionate players uh, really in college football with regard to the uh, the social movement, the racial unrest, uh, Justin and Chance is who I'm speaking of. You've been on social media uh, and, and made your, your thoughts pretty clear uh, in May and June and, and whatnot. Now you've got another situation up in Wisconsin with a, with a young man uh, being shot. How, how have the conversations been between you and your guys through all of that? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where um, I think transparency is key, you know, and, and I think that um, coaches, um, not, not only here, but coaches around the country have had to at least step back uh, from, from, from coach role and, and from football mode and step back into, you know, human role and, 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 and just be uh, willing to be a little bit vulnerable and transparent. Um, I know personally, um, we've taken that on and, 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 and went full steam ahead with, with not um, um, brushing things under the rug or not um, keeping things just all about ball here. You know, when you, when you bring young men here, um, it, it's more than just football. You're bringing them here for, and so we can't uh, get quiet and can't, uh, you know, act like these things that go on in the world don't affect our, our guys, because they do. And they affect us as coaches, you know, um, just the same. And so... I've tried to just make sure that I'm reaching out to each and every one of them um, throughout this off season, obviously throughout all the social events, just to, to go another step. Hey, do you need to talk more? You know, are there things on your chest? Are there things on your mind um, that, that are confusing, that are troubling you? Um, you know, I'll be honest, there's things that, that trouble me at times. There's things that, you know, I, I want to get off my chest. And so I think that, um, to be that resource for our kids is, is that's, that's what you're here for. And, um, you know, I, I wish um, we could, uh, you know, I, I just wish we could do better, you know, yeah. as, as a nation, I really do. Um, because I, I really do um, feel like um, we've dropped the ball in a lot of ways. I'll say it that way, you know. Um, and so it's good on one hand that things are being brought to light. Um, and then on the other hand, you, you know, you hate reading about things, you know, every other week or whatever it is. And, and, and it seems like new things and new situations keep popping up, but it's just the reality of the world that we, we're living in. And so we're gonna try to, you know, wrap our arms around our guys here as much as we can and uh, let them know we're here for them. Let them know that uh, when they hurt, we hurt. You know what I mean? When, when, when they're angry, we, we're angry as well. Um, because no one's um, exempt or immune to that, to having those personal feelings and things. And, um, you know, just finding that balance between football and, you know, um, social, you yeah. know, justice, reform, all those things. All, there's so many different layers to it. It really is. So Appreciate your answer. Yeah, thank you. We'll go to Joey Helmer with OU Insider and then Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Roy, it's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm great. Hey, I'm sure you've seen Parnell Motley's picked off Tom Brady a couple of times and he's having <laughs> a really, really good start in training camp with the Buccaneers. Um, first off, just your thoughts on that, and then how surprised were you that he didn't get drafted in April? Yeah, um, I'll kind of go the opposite order. You know, I was surprised from the standpoint of, you know, I thought he had – uh, you know, uh, a, a really good year, you know, and, and again, just having him for one season uh, is a challenge, but um, I thought he played some high level football last season. When you really go watch the tape, uh, that, that, that's not without mistakes uh, because no one is without mistakes, but when you really grind the film and, you know, he, he, he covered some elite guys in this league week in and week out and uh, held his own, you know, and so from that perspective, a uh, little surprise. But at the same token, I kind of joke, I thought I was pretty good too in college and didn't get drafted. So I learned, I learned years ago, man, you, 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 you can, it, it, sometimes it's a numbers game as well. You know, only so many guys can get their number uh, called on, on that draft day. And there's a lot of really good football players out there. And, um, and so you have to take that and, and, and put it, behind you and move forward. You know, you get opportunity with a team, you gotta, you gotta do the best with the opportunity you're given. And so to your, your first question, actually, that I think obviously he's doing a great job down there in Tampa. Um, I, I love that I keep reading about him because ultimately um, you have to be productive. And that's something that 
um, really has driven me this off season. Um, thought we did a really good job covering people last year, but if you don't make quarterbacks pay and, and, and get interceptions and, and, you know what I mean? Really start to fill up that, 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 that stat line when it comes to uh, uh, those things, you can sometimes go unnoticed. And so for him to make plays every day is, will be the only way he'll have a chance to stick on a football team at that next level in the, with the addition of, you know, uh, solidifying a spot on special teams, you know, as a free agent, I mean, you know, that, that's what you're there to do. You're, you're there to, uh, you know, play special teams. You're there to work your way up through it. You know, obviously, if, if you're not taking in the first round, you know what I mean? You, you, you have a clear understanding of, hey, here's my role. I better do a great job with whatever opportunity I'm given. And he seems to be doing that and uh, really proud of him. All right, Coach, if you got time for two more questions, sure. we got Kerry Murdoch with uh, Sooner Scoop and the Sports Animal, and then Brandon Drum. Kerry? Hey, Roy, uh, how are you doing, sir? I'm great. Hey, kind of uh, along, you know, what you were talking about with Garen, um, I'm curious, you know, you guys went through a lot last year trying to implement your system, um, you know, with, with a brand new bunch of guys. How much has it helped that relationship that you and Alex and Brian kind of had over the years to help you guys navigate through this and bring Calvin and Jamar along to, because obviously this has been a very tumultuous time, uh, just, you know, getting guys on the practice field, but how much have, have, have you, has you noticed that that really helps that relationship that you guys have built over the years, that bond that you have? Yeah, it, it's been huge. It's been huge from day one. Um, I feel like I read Coach Grinch's mind a lot, you know what I mean? Because I've heard the message um, so many times. I, I can feel when the practice isn't where he wants it. I can feel when, you know what I mean, he's going to say something when he's not. I, I think that's just the, the, the relationship and being around him. Uh, the same with uh, Coach Odom. I think um, the more you're around somebody, you just really um, get to know them and understand kind of, you know, how their mind works. And, and when it comes to Alex Grinch specifically, it, 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 his mind is always going. It, it, it's always doing this. It's always got to be better. It's always got to be kind and always, you know, th th don't get comfortable. Don't, don't allow average to creep in. And so um, what, what I think has made us successful in the past, and hopefully that continues, is that we, we're the same mindset. You know, we kind of believe the same things, you know, and, and believe in the same things and believe in the same way to get things accomplished. You know, it's, it's a very, um, um, it's a very, uh, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? There's no let up. I'll, I'll say that there's no let up, you know, there's no uh, uh, off days, no let up days. And so I think that message, um, our defense feels um, coming from other coaches, I think that Coach Tibbs and, you know, I know last year Coach McNeil, this year Coach Kane, I think they, 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 they see it and, and, and they echo it. And that's our job as position coaches, obviously, to echo whatever our defensive court, uh, coordinator um, believes in. And hopefully if you're on this staff, you believe it with your heart and soul. Um, and, and I often joke about Speed D, man. We, I live it, man. I really believe in everything we do. Um, not saying everything we do is right or wrong, but I believe in it, and that's what we're going to do. And so, um, you know, I, I, I probably couldn't be in a better situation. Um, and I'm, I don't want to speak for Coach Odom, but, you know, when you got a belief in something and, and, and you really know the person uh, that you're going into battle with, and I think that just makes it all the more um, um, productive and, and, and better in the long run. So. Those kids got it figured out. I think they got it figured out a little bit more in year two. Like, okay, message ain't changing. <laughs> we better you come on, come on along. The train, the train ain't stopping or slowing down. So get on board. Appreciate that, coach. Yep. All right, coach. Final question will be from Brandon Drum with OU Insider. Hey, Roy. Thanks for doing this. Yep. Yep. Um, just. You talked about Trey Brown, and uh, obviously Parna Motley's come up quite a bit. And you talked about how he wants to stack days this year. And you heard kind of the same rhetoric from Parnell Motley last year. Can you kind of, I guess, touch on how similar their mindset sets are, I guess, as far as Parnell's was last year to Trace this year uh, and how that can roll over into the season? And then uh, can you kind of touch on some of the young guys like uh, Joshua Eaton 
and uh, DJ Graham and stuff like that. Yeah, I, you know, I think I think Trey has an advantage over Motley just because you know he, he's a senior, but it's year two for him, and so it's not it's not um, the process of him having to be convinced as well because right, wrong, or indifferent, you know, when you show up as a as a new coach, um, you got some relationship building to do, you got some work to do um, to implement, you know, a new defense, and so uh, no matter who you are, th there's a big learning curve there, and so now. Um, you know, for Trey in year two, you know, a lot of those things, I don't have to, uh, that learning curve now has, you know what I mean? The, the, the gap has closed where it's not any convincing because now I have a year of film to go along with, you know, what was implemented last year. Now he has experiences and things from last season, speaking about Trey, that he can draw on that, hey, yeah, when coach says this, this is what he means. Remember this game, so forth and so on. And so, you know, and that's that's the the beauty of of, of having a player uh, for for multiple years. You know, you really can can uh, start to take some huge steps and gains uh, in his development. And Molly did a great job. You know what I mean? And and I think Trey will do a great job as well. Um, and so again, the, the the whole challenge, in my opinion, will be consistency, and 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 keeping it at that elite level, play in, play out, day in, day out, game in, game out. And anything less than that, um, I didn't get my job done as a coach. Um, as far as the young guys, really excited. You know, brought in a few guys uh, in that secondary, one being uh, uh, Josh Eaton, a big, long kid, um, a little bit raw. I mean, he's just a big athlete um, that can run, um, that, that has extremely long <laughs> levers and arms. And you ever see him getting in a stance, he's almost touching the ground and um, but but is equally as athletic and and he's doing a good job. You know, um, it, it's new for him. Um, you you can see him flash uh, just off of natural ability and one on ones and things of that nature when he's not thinking, which is obviously for a young guy. Uh, that's where you're trying to get him where they're not thinking, so you can see some of that ability that you recruited come out. And so I've seen that um, in certain situations. And so the biggest thing right now is just. Uh, getting that on the field experience for him, which we can't we can't get enough days of practice of walkthroughs and things like that to get these guys um, up to speed. But extremely excited about him, uh, and he has a <laughs> he, he has a great attitude, which I love. Anybody with some juice and some energy, that that's him every day, which is exciting to see. Um, Kendall Dennis from down there in Lakeland, Florida. Kendall, uh, another really really uh, exceptional athlete. I mean. Uh, I, I kind of brag on him. If you turn on his high school film, I mean, it's as good as, as anybody I've seen from an athletic standpoint, um, the explosiveness and things like that. Um, and he's and he's really good um, in terms of uh, uh, in his press work and things like that. You can see his natural form, real patient and things like that. Doesn't get frantic -y, which would which would you know lead you to believe that. Uh, he has some confidence in his ability to recover and to move and to mirror guys and things because we put him in so many of those situations. And so similar to Josh, the challenge will be getting him up to speed, uh, our speed uh, you know, with his plays and, and, and not having things run together um, and, and, and things like that, you know, and, you know, you have to remind those young guys, you're no longer the best athlete on the field. And so they're so used to, just going out there and just playing, then now um, saying, "Hey, no, you gotta, you gotta do that, but you gotta, you gotta do it with technique now, you know." And that's that's really what all those young guys are kind of working through, you know. They they have to do it within the the fit of the the defense or within the techniques that they're being coached, and then they'll really start to see um, uh, success play in and play out. Uh, DJ Graham. Uh, uh, looks like he's already been here for a year. I mean, really, really put together about 200 pounds, can run, um, and probably the most natural of all the guys just in terms of ball skills, in terms of just, um, you, 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 can, you can tell he's played on the other side of the ball. You know what I mean? You, you can just see it um, with just how he plays the ball, just how he moves, things like that. And, and so really excited about him as well. Um, and, and all three guys, very different. Um, from the standpoint, they all have different strengths, different weaknesses, but all three of them are, are their greatest challenge will be um, adjusting to college speed, adjusting to 
wait a minute, that guy across from me is, is, is just as fast as me, or he's, he's faster than me. And, and, and understanding what that means is that I can't just go out, uh, out athleticize a guy. I got to go play with technique. I have to understand the defense and where my helps and where, where my leverage, where I can, you know, get beat to. That, that's what we, we are actively grinding through with those guys as much as anything. And then getting guys in shape as well, you know, because – Again, missing an off season, missing spring. Uh, I think everybody, not just young guys, are still getting used to, hey, we're playing football again. And what that speed, what that really feels like to go out there for seven plays straight, eight plays straight, you know what I mean? And those long drives. So I'm excited. I really am. You know, again, anytime I can look around and I actually got guys I can sub in, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm excited because last year, again, that, that was one of our issues. And, and, and we felt like we addressed some of that. And then Justin Harrington as well. Don't want to forget Justin. I kind of, uh, he's a new guy. I wouldn't say a young guy, new guy, um, but, but really, really flashed uh, uh, when he was out there on the field. Uh, extremely big, extremely fast. I mean, you, you mistake him for a linebacker if you ain't careful. And uh, he really is, 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 is polished and, and, and knows how to use his length and his strength and things to his advantage. I think he's going to, really, really be special uh, when it's all said and done here. So um, what does it mean? I don't know. But again, it, it's a starting point and and, and uh, we got to go uh, earn our check as coaches and get those guys up to speed and develop them and make sure that we put a good product on the field.